Bounce rate, two words that strike fear into website admins everywhere. But there's a difference in your exit rate, which is unavoidable, and bounce rate, which you can do some things to manage. Let's break down the concept and dig into how you can keep your bounce rate low and conversions high. Exit rate is the rate at which people leave your site, period. Whereas bounce rate is the rate at which people bounce into and out of your site without interacting. Is a high bounce rate bad? No, not necessarily. Also, yes, it can be. It all depends on the purpose of the page. Let's turn to Google Analytics to figure out what's really going on and how we can lower our bounce rate. To check your overall bounce rate, you'll navigate to Behavior, Overview, and see a box labeled Bounce Rate. Since this is the overview of your stats, this particular percentage is for the entire site. It doesn't tell you a lot of information, so you'll need to drill down a bit to get any data. But first, you need to figure out something important, search intent. What is search intent? Well, to put it simply, it's the reason that people landed on your site in the first place. If a person Googles, do my feet shrink when I lose weight, and they land on a product page for your e-commerce shoe store, that page isn't fulfilling the intent of their search. So they bounce. If 99 out of 100 people do that, even though your overall site has a 75% bounce rate, that particular page has a 99% bounce rate. Pretty simple, right? Now, if they land on your blog post titled, yes, your feet shrink when you lose weight, then your post absolutely fulfills their search intent. But what if 90% of people are still bouncing from it? What that means is that while your blog post incentivizes people to click into it and read and satisfies everything about their search intent, you haven't incentivized them to interact with your site in a way that adds additional value to why they came there in the first place. Some things you could do, for instance, would include perhaps a pop-up that asks them to opt into your e-commerce shoe store mailing list so that when their feet shrink, they have options available immediately. Or perhaps a link to another blog post on shoe sizing that gets them deeper into your site. These could potentially lower your bounce rate from let's say 90% to 40%. There are a number of ways in Google Analytics to find which pages are bounced from. We like a more visual method, and that means we are going to use the user's flowchart. You could find it under audiences, user flow from the left-hand menu. The initial user flowchart can help a lot, but we wanna add a segment to the graph. So click on add segment, and that will turn into choose segment from list. Then just click on bounced sessions to make it appear in the charts. All you have to do is hover over the green area to see which particular pages have been bounced from. You will see the summary of the number of bounces by default, and you can drill down by hovering. In this view, you will see the drop off at 100% and through traffic at 0%. That's your bounce rate from these pages. For a deeper explanation using Google Analytics, including a real example, check out the blog post linked in the video description. There is no quick fix to lowering your bounce rate. However, there are some tried and true methods that tend to work to increase engagement. Let's talk about them. Optimize page speed. While this isn't tied directly to your bounce rate, one of the primary reasons that users leave your site is because they simply can't access the content quickly enough. If your page doesn't load in under three seconds, they're likely to bounce. You can lower your page speed by optimizing images, removing excess JavaScript, minifying the markup and other code in the site, and caching the site using any number of plugins. Pull the users to action with CTAs. Regardless of how you do it, creating meaningful calls to action is probably the best way to reduce bounce rate, using the right colors, larger sizing, that sort of thing. While you don't wanna be obnoxious with your CTAs, you do want them to be noticeable. Try a persistent banner at the top of the page or use pop-ups that only appear as they are going to bounce a slide in email subscribe window in the corner, even a live chat box to keep them engaged. Conduct A-B tests. Create two versions of your layout, then serve them to different audiences to determine which one drives engagement and conversion. You have a number of options at your disposal and Divi users have even more. We even have A-B testing for layouts built right in to our builder. Create better, more engaging content. Now, this isn't a dig at you. We're not saying that you're creating anything less than superb content. What we are saying is that you might need to change your strategy to keep people from bouncing. Maybe you need more headlines to make the posts and pages more scannable. Perhaps more images or infographics would lead to more social shares. And for more information on these methods, including resources and tutorials, 
check out the blog post linked in the description. With that said, we hope we gave you some ideas on how to lower your bounce rate. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more content. With that said, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.